and I'm gonna I'm gonna recap this a little bit more here, showing you the red and green lights, just so that you understand, like this particular circuit. Okay. So we know five and six. Five runs strap guard arms down. Six runs strap guard arms up. Okay. Now I can look here. There's five, and there's six. Okay. I know by those green lights, if you'd call me up and I'd ask you what's five and six, which one's lit, and you tell me, I know what the computer's thinking. It's trying to send that motor down. It's trying to send that stuff arm down or trying to send it up, right? But I don't know if it's reading. So that's where I need to look at my inputs. Now my inputs, the strap guard arms read several different inputs, okay? Um, and so inside this chrome right here, you see the black strip? Uh, there's, it's only on this side. It's just that side. Just this side. There's a little bolt here holding it in. I think. Yeah. See that. See that black strip right there. Yep. And then also, do you see the colored lines on it? Yep. Okay. You got a green one here. You got a red one here. You have a white one clear at the top. Okay. All of those um, are matched with the colored wires that are actually in that. And there's actually computer chips in there that whenever a magnet passes in front of it, it reads it. Okay, so you see this white white pad right here? Yep. It's got magnets inside of it. Um, there's a white uh, plastic piece right up here on the vertical plunger, uh, right over here. You, you'll have to see it on this side. See it right here? Yep. This has got magnets in it. I mean, you can see it collects crap sometimes. But um, so whenever the vertical plunger closes, it reads the top white line. Right. Whenever it goes down, I forget what color it reads, but it reads a, a line down. So it knows what position, what position right. it's supposed to be in. Uh, and so those, when those magnets are in front, it will light up your inputs. Okay. So your strap guard arms, there are uh, bell position zero, there's bell position one, there's bell position two, and three. Okay. And all the lights accordingly are changed accordingly. You know what I'm saying? There's no, none of them line up like the um, the photo eyes. Those photo eyes are in series. That do one. All these are separate. Okay. Yeah. So, um, well, okay. So check this out here. Input plug. Okay. This input plug right here is these lights. Okay. Um, so. Input number one is red light one, and so forth. So I know for this sensor bar here, um, sensor bar's got a brown wire, okay? So it's gonna have a brown line on there, on the sensor bar. That's bail position zero. That's where the strap guard arms are at this current position. So if I was to turn, put electric on, I guarantee you red light number one will be on. Is zero top? Yes. Okay. Yep, it can have a bail setting on it at bail position zero, but if it's not processed, it's not in bail position one. It was in the chamber of the bandit. Yeah, it has to be in the chamber of the bandit for it to be bail position one. Okay? And you're talking about? Those are the strap gun arms. Okay. This, this whole carriage right here is the strap yes. gun arms. And the position they are at. So it folds back. No. Or it folds down? Or it just it's, slides straight It just down. slides straight down. So I want to be uh, uh, make sure forward. that we know that there are two separate things here. There's the vertical plunger and there's the strap gut arms. See, that's what I'm trying to process here. Okay, this is the... Strap gut arms. Okay, and the vertical plunger is... Is this thing right here. Just that. Well, it's, it's this whole unit. Right. It's what opens and closes. But they don't move together. Mm -mm. Oh, crap. So see, see right here where it's split? So see here where it's split? Oh, yeah. yeah okay. The strap guard arms right now is just setting at the bottom of the vertical plunger. Right. Okay. They come up and hit, and that's a nice stop for them. Okay. Um, so these are separate entities. They think differently. They act differently. But that's what the bale sets on. Yes. And it carries those bales down. So all the way to the bottom. All the way just, to the bottom. It just stacks it on down. So so it can come back up. The horizontal plunger will never 
stay in the back position unless you hit reset bundle. It'll always come back at the It'll second. always come back to the front, getting ready for the next bail. But whenever you're in the true bail position zero and there's no hay in it, you hit reset bundle, it'll stay in the back. And that's the back. That's yep. as far back as it goes. It goes back a little bit farther. I think the yeah, hydraulics okay, seek a little bit, but yeah. It's pretty much there. Yep, it's pretty much there. Would it end up in this position if you were cleaning it up to store? Or was that going to go to the um, if, you, if you don't hit reset bundle, no. If you push reset bundle, yeah. Is there There's no problem? need to leave it like this, though. No. I mean, it's There's no prefer. Well, I mean, no. you ought to put it back the way it goes, all right? It, it doesn't matter. Um, I've even had guys leave uh, hay in the machine over winter but i mean didn't bother didn't bother yeah that's pretty yeah, much it yeah i mean when some guys are done they're done <laughs> um, but anyway like i mean you can clean it out you can do whatever you want with it um it's not going to affect the machine it's just not it'll make it rust out a little quicker if you have wet hay in there but um if you can't gather a lot of mice and they manage to move into your electric box. And yep. Like yeah. That doesn't usually happen. That's no. You gotta keep that clean. But just remember when it comes to tech support, it is, it I looks complicated, but it is simple processes just lined up. I'm, I'm getting overloaded right now. Yeah. I mean, okay. it's going to take me a little bit of, it's hey. going to be very elementary when I call you the first time. It is okay, I'm man. I'm not sure where we're at. I'm I didn't hear send you, you a picture. Said. Yep. <laughs> uh, I love the picture deal on this. Yeah. Everybody got a cell phone here to receive pictures. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> I mean, for sure. Well, way. and you know what? Uh, first time, we, we are fine with people calling us. Uh, that, I mean, we're happy when people call us. We're here to help. That's part of it. Um, the thing is, is what I don't want you to do is not call us and get super frustrated and call me mad. Mm -hmm. oh, I don't do you know what I'm saying? Like, I've had people just, they're not mad at me. They're mad at the situation. And, uh, and I get it. When you're in Hayfield, you want to move. It's not time to sit around. And uh, they call me and be like, I tried this, 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 and this. Well, sometimes i got to undo what they did yeah. and then step forward through with it. So just, you know. Don't be afraid to call. Um, and let me touch on the nitro boost just because it's it's here. I might be jumping around a little bit, but um, you've got they changed concept. it. What's that? It's the same concept. You just push it down for closed, open it up for open. Okay, and you still lock the jam nut down, I guess. Yep. Okay. All right. So see this nut right here. Um, does it bottom out on the top side? Um, just like. No, right now it is in close center mode. Oh, it is. So it just goes down towards. We need to change that before I leave. Yeah, I'll forget. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so, whenever we th unthread this, does it bottom out like the other one on the top side? Not currently. Not currently. So, what kind of uh, dimension do we set this at on the open side? Um, cool. On open, technically, you take the bolt out, but you just make it so it doesn't fall out. Okay, all right. Okay, sounds good. So, um, back it back out. So yeah, so on the closed center system, um, which is normal for these machines to run on. Um, if we have it in the closed centered with the accumulators the way it is, uh, it'll sit there and kind of vibrate because it's kind of fighting against each other because what it's trying to do and what the closed center system tries to do, it just kind of fights itself. So for that, you'll want to lock it down so that it does not operate. Now, you can use a closed center system with this and it works great, and you can use lower GPMs. Right. So you can have a 15 gallon per minute closed center system and use it with a Nitro Boost where you couldn't use it with the right. Bandit to begin with. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the Nitro Boost will only help you even if you get different tractors. Right, um, right. But uh, whenever open centered, you unthread like you said, and... Uh, um, is that in the manual? Uh, I'm I believe sure it's it in the Nitro Boost manual. So okay. underneath that thing, that a hexagon thing is basically another one of those red buttons like what you had he showed you over there oh yeah pushing. yeah it's just there's one over there and you're just pushing it down right like right it. holding mm -hmm. it down yep yep sure. well, we need to fix that before i go because that's the only tractor i got at this present time yep for sure i'll probably try to stay everything the same way i don't have to change nothing yep for sure um now are you going to be picking up out of the field or pulling behind the bale? okay which one first 
depends on whether somebody calls me. I got a couple guys want me to do theirs, and I'll pick them up out of the field. Or if I do my own, I I don't know yet. I may try to tie it okay. on behind my baler. I may just try to do it like this. Mm -hmm. Some um, guys tell me that this is nice because you can. Yeah. Don't yeah. get any broke bales in them. You can just gin right along. I got they you. Say yeah. it's just as fast and. They, uh, of course, I'm all flat where I'm at. But uh -huh. You can see the bales before they're going in there. Yeah. 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 Like this. Well, and then another, um, you're going to have that hose to where you can uh, lift that sucker up off the ground and just skip right over top of a bale. So you, it's not like you're going to have to whip out and around. Right. You just lift it up and let it go right over top and then set well, it right back down. When you can just raise your hydraulic mm -hmm. there and pick it up. Yep. How, do, how does it, uh, he can do what? He can use it either way, just the way it is? Um, no. So if you want to go behind uh, the baler, uh, you pull this pin out, uh, take the clip out of the chain, and this whole thing will slide out. And then your hoses for your baler will hook right on here. Um, you pull this pin, lift that up, and it sets around. And there's a hitch over there for this hitch. Um, and then uh, I think that's it. I think it takes like five to seven minutes. Yeah. Once you're good at it, five to seven minutes, 10 minutes for the first time. Man, I hardly ever use that. I don't know. Um, I, I, I think it's the same. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then there's a reese hitch that will slide right in here, and then you just re pin it back up. I couldn't see that. I just wondered. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, it takes. The worst part about it is just dealing with the greasy chain. Yeah. <laughs> After that, it's, it's pretty simple. But. So there is a. Uh, yeah. A uh, Right here. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. That yep. is. Okay. Master link. Yep, master link. Yeah. Also, it's slotted, so you go down the dips or whatever, it's yeah, just going to float. Gonna but go ahead and yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so that also that, 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 that's how it floats when you're on the baler as well. Mm -hmm. Is that slot? Yeah. Right now we have a stop in there to hold it up. Right. I saw that. Yeah, for sure. Pretty smart. Well, I think we're in the position to go ahead and thread it. Yeah, because this information's running in and out me just about as fast as you can talk. <laughs> That's the only way. I mean, you know, nice. I've seen them yeah. operate. Yeah. It would make more sense with it running. Yeah. yeah. Um, just if you if you take anything away from today, don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. Yeah. Hydraulics off. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Just just turn them uh, off. Yeah, I will. I'm um, that's the least of my worries right now is that part. Remember how to thread it, um, which is not going to matter for you on this time because I'm going to thread it. And then whenever um, you go to re-thread it, as long as you didn't run it out, you can take one side off, thread it, take the other side off, re-thread it. That way you can just trace yeah. exactly what they did yeah. and match it the first well, it few times. It showed it on the manual too. Okay. On the yep. Yeah, you also sure. have a video of that now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I didn't mean the manual. I meant the video on the website. Yep, I and there's a video it. for switching this around too. Yeah, I saw that too. Yep, that's why I ordered it. There's a video for what? Uh, that? Swapping that swapping out. Swapping it out. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I'll go ahead and start on that. So, uh, top three or four things: shut off hydraulics, um, the threading, and then understanding inputs and outputs. You do that, and everything else is going to pretty come become pretty natural. Right. So. I'll yeah. get it. It'll just take a little while. Yeah. I'm not yeah, the little mechanical guy in the world. No, I feel like well, we got a few years of advantage. Oh, so yeah. it just rolls off my tongue. It's just this, that, and the other. But I got a little bit of, little bit of time. So anyway, um, you'll notice that here we go. Notice how that strapping is flat. Okay. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been ran through the crimper roller yet. And when we run it, I'm guessing all you guys are running twine, right? Not I. Uh, wire. Oh, you're running wire? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's something you're going to want to change. Uh, when it runs flat like this, it, it doesn't cause it to coil as bad. Um, if you do high tensile and you crimp it, man, it makes it look like a ribbon, right? Of course, we don't want high tensile in right. this machine anyway. We want standard, uh, you know, super soft type pliable uh, steel. The strength is not the issue. Um, when you go high tensile, there's a lot of inconsistency in it, and it, there's like hard spots, and uh, sometimes the crimpers don't like it. Uh, but if you uh, um, 
you do standard, and it's cheaper anyway. It's cheaper than a high tensile. Um, you do standard, and then there's a couple places that we recommend that has, has good strapping or whatever. Um, but then uh, with you running wire, there's no reason to crimp this. Right. I think and I read that on your website. Yep. So, very important. I can't tell you how many times I've had people call me up and be like, well, my banding drums aren't unfeeding and it's cutting the strapping way up into the hay and it's busting the, busting the twine on my bales. But you're like, you got it threaded wrong. No, I did exactly how I said it. So you got it going through. Number one step right here. Make sure that this clevis is below. Don't turn it up like this. Okay? Because this has got the spring tension or whatever and yes, it will lift it, but the point of entry here levels it out too much and it doesn't disengage the brake. So we want to make sure that the clevis is down and that your strapping goes underneath the 3 8 rod because it's actually lifting on the 3 8 rod whenever it pulls tension. Right. Okay? So we want to make sure we go underneath the 3 8 rod, through the rollers, and through the crimper rollers. Now here's where you would be different since your wire. Um, you can take these crimper rollers out and just stick the bolts back in. Okay? There's some machine washers with it. Just throw them in a Ziploc baggie if you ever decide to change it or can sell the machine. Do that? Here? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, we'll do it right here. here. Um, but at this point, we'll run this strapping okay. if we take the crimper rollers out around the back roller. See this back roller right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I see, a, I see a bolt. Yeah, so that's the back, that's the roller. So that's for wire. Okay. Okay, so go. It goes around. Underneath it. Underneath and, and then back up. But okay. If you don't, if you don't, if you use twine, you don't use that. Nope, you go straight up from this. And so this horizontal plunger is actually seeped forward a little bit. Um, so this typically will go straight up from here. Okay, but we're going to pull it back and around this roller. Okay, so this is twine. And I'll, I'll do the same thing, just go through here. Yes. And back up around. Yep. Okay. All right, so we'll go straight up through the horizontal plunger roller, and then you've got these plastic guides right here. Now for you guys, you're gonna have a round tube, and it's just gonna have a little metal uh, clip looking thing that's welded to it, and you'll slip it up through there, okay? So at this point, you're gonna get these uh, uh, rollers on these arms here and I call them uh, light and horn arms because your light and horns on the other side uh, you're gonna go straight up from there over and wrap it down okay now at this point you're gonna want to pull you some slack off this thing and see it's horizontal plunge got a lot more force than I do pull the slack through okay and then here I want to flatten this out okay and at the end of it, I want to make sure that's kind of just a little bit bowed up, right? And so you see this roller on the strap yard arms here? I'm going to slip it right in there, okay? Now, um, you guys might as well hop up to the banding box um, and uh, look over the top here. I'm going to set in kind of right here and kind of hold myself with my legs. But uh, um, you want to slide that strapping. So you see this uh, gap right here? Yep. I don't think I've got enough strapping. I don't see it yet. Yeah, I got it. Oh, you see that? Okay, so here I roll, I'm at the roller here, and I'm just feeding in my slack. And so see how I've got the strapping right there? See it run out? It's coming, it came out here. Okay, you see that, that 3 8 rod right there that the, the oh. finger pivots on? I must be getting shorter or something. Huh? So we want to make sure that we're over top of that 3 8 rod. And that right. gives that a direct line of sight. If you, that's why I got that little bit of bump on the end of it to keep right. it. And so it goes over here and I make sure I just fish it underneath there. Okay? And now it's going to come out the tip of that roller. You just have to raise this up to get it to go under. Um, well, the, this pivot point is not going to move. That's why you need that kick. Right. And then whenever it does, you just slide it on in through. Okay. But that, the reason I give that kick is I need it over that 3 8 rod. Okay. That's kind of hard to jam that up there, but if it's bowed down, it's Yeah, exactly. Right. 
Here, I'll just slip up the left side of you. Okay, so at this point, I got some more slack down there. I'll go ahead and pull the rest of it to get back here. So at this point, I'll do three fingers, bend down, three fingers, bend down. Now I've got a C, okay? And then, that seems a little stiff. Okay, so see these two rollers right here? I need that C to slip past those two rollers and hook. This is the fetcher, okay? And see, I've got this uh, silver piece here. That kind of holds that up against that roller, allowing that to feed through. So what I want to do is I want to take, I'm kind of in a bad position here. I'll take one hand, pull that back, slip that on those two rollers, yeah. and then let that set. So that goes over that roller and under the bottom one. Yep. And straight out. Okay. So I just, I made that C and I just hooked it around. And so I want that, I do not want this strapping to be past, okay? And it actually could be a little shorter if I want it to be. You know what I'm saying? It could be mm -hmm. right there if I want. But I just do three fingers, three fingers, and bend it over. And then at this point, I snap the red handles. That lock for them. Okay? Okay. Do that to both sides, and then uh, pull, pull your, uh, your, your slack back out of it. So I just back feed the drums back on, pull all the slack back out of it, and that's threaded. So, I mean, it, uh, when it comes time to do it, and you've done it a few times, that whole process right there will take oh, 10 yeah. minutes by the time you pull it out of the back of the truck, slip your new spools on, and load it up. I that's the worst part, putting a 100 pound spool over on there. There's, there's a little knack to it, but it's, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Is it, is it it does, and it is very important that it comes off the top of the roller. Some guys, they'll, uh, they'll buy extra banding drums. They'll just have two set in there. They'll go ahead and load it up first thing in the morning because a lot of guys will do more than two, 3,000 bales a day. And so uh, um, they'll have those just laying in the back of the truck, and they'll have a marked arrows which way they put it on. Because you know, when this is this is full and this has got tape on it, you got to feel and make sure you get going the right direction. That you, when you throw it on the spool, you orientate them opposite yeah. of each other. Yeah. And so they'll just they'll go ahead and have the arrows marked on them, oh, flop it down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Come off the bottom, but... So yeah, you pull these clips. This slides off. The wing nuts come off. These split. Um, the uh, the banding has three metal clips around it. So you just take your tin snips, bars, or whatever, cut those. Make sure that you put them on the spool yeah. before you cut the clips. And when you cut the clips, yank them out and put the top on. These, these are, there's a left and a right? The, the inside's different. No, the, these spools are interchangeable oh, left and right. Are, these come on without. No, they're on there, you're just buying them. You're just buying, you're you're just buying, buying okay. the strapping. Right. Right. And right. so in order to get them on, like this spool will go to that side and that spool will go to this side, right. but the orientation of how it's fed off of it, you want to make sure it's on the top side. So when I, say if I pull that sucker off and lay it down and I take the wing nuts off and I pull it off, if I know I'm going on this side, I need to make sure that it's spinning that way. And people mark them left and right just so that they know. The first no, part no, that's, that's, that's fine. Though. Those, they don't look the same. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I think we're ready to at least hook electric up to it, and I'll show you photo eye adjustments and things like that, okay? Yeah.
battery. Yeah, just run right to the battery. That's it. Mm -hmm. Arthur's the already got the plug on for the for trailer, so it's the same thing. Right? Yeah, so, as long as your core is heavy duty enough, because you're pulling quite a bit of voltage running all those coils. Right. So, but yeah, we, we just run that all the way up to the tractor battery. I, I don't know if it's rated for it. See the, see the cord size difference? This has even got the casing on it. I would run your own plug. All the reds on there just on the ground anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But those are pretty decent sized coils on the machines. They've lost some coils. Yeah. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and sync up your iPad to the machine. Um, since we've already synced up to it, it's already online. Uh, but say you've never never synced up a bandit before to this particular iPad, you get a new one, you run over it, whatever. I'm do it here in a okay. No I got you. Idea. All right. So you want to go in, download the Bell Bandit app. Okay. So this is just literally an app, right? And then you go in here to the serial number, click on it, and yeah. So literally, like this. That's how many bandits we've actually seen just this iPad up to, right? Um, so anyway, um, they have, they they numeric this, don't they? 682. 682. Okay. See how it says uh, connected on there? It's going to show you the signal. Um, I can disconnect it. I can click to connect. Okay, sometimes you have to click to connect in order to get that first initial, but there on out afterwards, as soon as you plug it in, it's going to automatically connect to it. Okay? And well, so, when we get done with this, I'd like to sync mine up to it. Okay. Like throw it in there just yeah. in case. Yep, absolutely. So at this point, I can go in here and I can see how that changes color whenever I press it down. I can go in here and I can add bundles to it. Um, I can go in here and I can change stuff, but it's not going to do anything until. Um, I get hydraulics hooked up to it. I go in here, see, override mode. It will not work if I've got something on this one with a red ring around it. Right. Okay. So. And you have to touch that and touch one of the others. Yes. Too. Anywhere, any other screen. Okay. And I can get into all this other stuff too. Uh, any other screen is a single touch right. except for your e-stop and your controls page. Okay. Uh, th there's a boatload more stuff into this right. that I'll, I'll get to more on the end and yeah. Alrighty. So, for the time being, I'm going to plug in the e-stop just so that you guys get the visual of, of, uh, So anytime you hit the e-stop, whether it's hydraulic slide or anything like that, it's going to kill the buzzer. Yeah. But still not safe. Right. Okay. Still not safe. E even though the beeper stops beeping, okay, annoying as heck. Even though it stops beeping, I still can have hydraulic pressure. You see what I'm saying? If something fails, that's why we have to kill the hydraulics to the tractor. I'm I'm being a little redundant there, no, but. I'm All right, since it already says photo two ready on the bail, I'm not worried. Of course, there's no hay in the machine. I'm not worried about messing anything up. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, you notice uh, the photo eyes. I'll just go ahead and show you this one right here. The photo eye right here. Yep. See how you got the red and green light? Yep. When I put my hand in front of it, light goes out, right. okay? Um, on this particular one, notice how the red light's already out. I put my hand in front of it and the light comes on. Okay. In the box, whenever you actually look the, the Bible, okay, yeah. for it, it's going to say normally on, normally off. Okay. It's just the way we've got the redundancies set in there. Okay. So even though that, when, in order to check a photo eye, okay, and actually make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do, just put your hand in front of it 
and see the change because those, one, this one, lights, yeah, the red light's yeah. normally off here and the red light's normally on there. When you put your hand in front of it, it does the exact opposite. Okay. Can you see that box on the iPad? Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, where'd the iPad go? And you can see the lights going on. Right? Yeah. So I go over here to troubleshooting, okay? And I had already had it pulled up. This is the troubleshooting page, right? Uh, but I already had this pulled up, right? And now since it's synced up, I've got red light 10, 11, 12, and I got green light 2 and 4. So it's telling me right now the energized state of number 2 is vertical swing open. I know that if I lose power to DIN connector 2, that vertical swing is going to go close. Okay, energized state, and I can show you here. That's just, you're just talking about on the solenoid. It's got power to the open side of the cylinder. Yes, right? and so look at here. See the vertical swing? It says number two. The arrow shows the energized state. So the energized state of the vertical swing is open. Yeah. And I know that it's energized by green two. Yeah. Now, if that was closed right now, and I knew I had power, and that says green, I, there's something wrong, so I'm going to look at that circuit. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it's just... I know it by the back of my yeah. hand, but the more, the more you, I mean, it, it's 12, it's 12 red and green lights. You, you'll, you'll yeah. learn them quick. Yeah. So anyway, so I can say, um, horizontal plunger is extended, vertical plunger is open, uh, band relay box, uh, my uh, uh, fetcher cylinders are both ex uh, retracted back. Uh, number seven, I'm pretty sure that's uh, mid band in. So. Or I forget what number seven. Why is that for real? What is that? Um, well, so uh, the fuses, like there's a gray two, uh, purple three. Oh, it's okay. just it's I just signifying. Was, was on. Nope. But anyway, so uh, these boards are exactly the same. You just swap out a few fuses and then switch the, uh, the things if you want to swap boards. Yeah. So it adds redundancy in. So if you get broke down and be like, well, there's an input and output not working on your board, swap them and get back going again. So, a lot of redundancy. You have to change the dip switches? Dip switches and then uh, uh, a couple of the fuses. So, okay. that, that's it. Literally, pull the suckers out, slip them over, and you're good. Is there something in that book that tells you what the fuses to change? And uh, yes, yes. And then you can call us up as well if you can't find it in the book, and we'll, we'll help you out with that. Alrighty. Um, but anyway, so. But the fuses are all the same. In, on this picture? Uh, well, the fuses tell you, so like this has uh, a four amp fuse. Well, that's running a heavier circuit. Okay. So if you and switch this, you'll want to swap. Yeah. So you can look at that and tell which ones to change. Yeah. Like them. Okay. Yep. The only thing that changes here is is, is which lights are let, uh, lit up. That's the only information being transferred to this page. Right. So you, all the rest is the picture, and then you yep. can adjust it. But. Um, Alrighty, well, let's get some hydraulics to it. I think I got hydraulics to it. I think I just got the e-stop turned off. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Alright, ready? There you go. Alright, so at this point... That's the best e-switch you're going to get, right? Um, so I really don't want this uh, running while I'm talking, so I'm going to I'm going to manipulate this, but check here. If I add pressure to that, see how I ate 3,000 PSI, and of course valves bleed a little bit or whatever, it's, it's dropping back down to 29, 28, whatever. Um, so that's what that tractor's putting out. It's putting out a full 3,000 PSI. Hi. Yeah. Um, do you guys want to break or do you want to run a little bit longer? It doesn't matter to me. Whatever y'all want to do. Um, the, uh, the hydraulic process or whatever is going to take a little bit, so it'll probably be a good time. Alrighty. You notice whenever you hit the E stop and kill the power to it, it disengaged all the, the pressure from the accumulators out. Right. So even though 
it's disengaged the, the pressure to the hydraulic hoses. If you crack a hose, I want to see those ball valves turn. You see what I'm saying? They're still pressured up. Yes. And they're actually shut off right now. Uh, the ball valves, um, we always put them on to where if they're running with the hose, it means it's flowing. If it's across the hose, it's off. So. Well, let's drive back to E real quick.